Hello, hello, hello folks, it's me, Kerbinot here, and today we're going to be having another episode of Let's Actually Play KSP. So, let's get right into it. This is the first launch of episode 3, and we are going to be going to the moon again, because last episode we, we gave it a try, we tried to go to the moon, and we, we landed a probe, and managed to get that probe back, although it kind of blew up in the atmosphere, you know. You know, but um, now we're actually going to try and get to the moon with a Kerbal and return. So here we go. This is the first launch trying to get there. So we've got the Apoapsis up um, to lunar orbit. And there we go. We're inside the moon's sphere of influence. And we're going to make a, a quick change to our orbit just to bring that Apoapsis up out of, <laughs> out of a collision course with the moon before placing down our manoeuvre node and just um, making sure we know how and when to circularize. So, let's capture ourselves, let's do this break and burn, let's burn away! So, here we go, we're, we're burning. Now, the purpose of this mission is just kind of to get the science that we're going to need to um, kind of set up a more long-term science goal on the moon because at the moment we only have the, really the equipment to send out uh, a launch at a time and get, well not a launch at a time but you know a launch and then land and then return all in the one mission and it's, it's although that's cool um it isn't the most efficient way to do it and let's be honest it's rather boring just having to launch lots of the same mission over and over again um, and so what we're going to do with this mission is we're going to try and get enough science to um, be able to go back to the moon with a lot more stuff. Now, of course, this one mission won't be able to supply the science we need to do that all on its own. We're going to send out a couple more missions. But after that, we're going to send um, like a long term mission out uh, to the moon and to Minimus. So here we are. We're just landing right now. Um, you can see I'm coming in really, really low, but this is because it's the most efficient way to land on the moon, or to land on any celestial body without an atmosphere, is just to um, come in really low and then burn at your periaps, and your periaps should be just touching the ground, like just, um, and that is the most efficient way on a in the ideal situation where the object you're landing on is circular, that would be the most efficient way to land. Okay, so now that we've landed, let's do these, this sciencey stuff. So we can uh, press all the buttons. We've got two um, mystery goo containers on this. Uh, we do not need three or four because we're only getting the uh, landing science. We're not going to be doing any orbital science, or at least we're not planning to. Um, because we can either go back and get any science that we haven't got already with this longer term mission that we're planning, or we'll already have most of the science um, in low orbit and in high orbit anyway. So yes, we plant the flag and we start thinking, wait a second, do we have enough fuel to get back? Because this landing did take a lot more fuel than I had anticipated. Um, I wasn't too sure whether the launcher would give me give me enough um, fuel left to land this thing on the moon, and from the looks of it, we do not have enough fuel to take off and return. However, that's not a priority at the moment. Uh, at the moment, what we're going to do is try and get some more EVA science, because I did land on the edge of one of the craters, and what that means is I landed on the edge of one of the biomes, which means I can hop over, do a quick EVA over to the next biome. Now, I'm, I'm looking on the map here just to see um, which direction I should be going, and of course, um, there we go, we can um, hit the ground at high speed and the Kerbal starts uh, break dancing. but um, that's that. We're seem to be near a new biome, so let's just check. Um, just go up this hill, of course, see if we can get a good view. And uh, we're heading towards hitting the hill. Let's see what happens when we stand up 
if we can stand up. <laughs> yeah, I kept rolling and it was very annoying. I had to like um, do a wee trick with physical time warp to get him to stand up. But yes, we got that new biome science. We got to the other biome and we got that science, which was um, definitely needed. I was uh, wanting to grab as much science as possible from this mission. So, here we go, just watching how much EVA fuel I have. Things are quite dark because the sun is just rising, I think, or it's just setting, I am not sure. But we're landing, we landed in a kind of an area where the, where the sun was just there. And of course, once we got in, we realized that, yeah, we really didn't have enough fuel to return to orbit. And if we tried, we'd kill the Kerbal and lose the science. Now, although killing Mr. Jebediah Kerman is a bad thing, um, we are more worried about the science, really. I mean, that's terrible for me to say, but I was more, more worried about the science. Um, I could have saved Jebediah, I could have probably got him into orbit, but that would have destroyed the science, so it would be save Jebediah at the cost of the science, and let's be honest, no. We'll just send a rescue mission. So this is the rescue mission here. This is... Um, the mission to the moon, not for science, but actually to recover Jebediah, and uh, with it, the science that he gained. So this this uh, mission in and of itself will not be gathering any science. What I don't notice is when I'm launching it, that I think, is it Bill or or um, Bob? I think it's Bill has hitched a ride. He's um popped into that capsule, and I'm sure I cleared it, but um yeah. I've, I kind of noticed that and decide, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to leave him in moon orbit because he was not supposed to be hitching a ride, that's his own fault, he's going to spend some time in moonar orbit and I was going to hit him like with the back of this but then I realised that might send him off flying and that, yeah, it's just kind of annoying. So I just give him a wee tap with the spacecraft and he just bumps away and slowly floats away into the abyss of space. So here we go, we're landing under probe power, of course. Uh, we have got the solar panels, because we did unlock those, um, which means that we can power this probe. Um, and I'm hoping to make use of probes um, a bit more, because we do have the higher class um, science stuff. So we can always send these probes out and uh, transmit the data back and everything for kind of initial exploration of um, planets and other celestial bodies. So here we are, we're coming in quite low, and I'm finding it hard to judge the distance between uh, myself and the the landing site, and so I'm just trying to break here while also kind of burning uh, upways, up, upways, is that a word? You know, um, away from the ground, just so I don't crash into it, And but here we go, um, we're coming in for that final landing, but I haven't been burning um, in the correct, I haven't been burning full um, horizontally all that time, and so I'm I'm going too fast, and so I overshoot even at full burning strength, and it looks like I'm going to hit this mountain, and I realise this, and I'm like, oh no, wait, wait, no, burn, burn, burn up the ways, don't, don't do that, burn, ver burn vertically, <laughs> and so I do that, and point down just to correct out that uh, burn. And I'm thinking, should I just land here and send the, e the Kerbal e e send Jebediah over with the EVA? But I figure, no, why would I do that? There's no real point. I've got about half a tank left on my landing stage, and this stage is just for landing. I don't need to get back to orbit with this stage. Uh, this craft was d designed as a kind of a have its own landing stage and a takeoff stage, much like the um, lunar. Uh, lander. The lunar lander was a kind of two-stage thing as well. It had its, its landing stage and its um, takeoff stage from the moon. But one big difference, I guess, with the lunar lander in this is that the lunar lander only had enough fuel to like land, and just enough. Um, in fact, yeah, I think was it one of the pilots of the lander had to um, correct because there it was quite rocky terrain um, so I had to change the landing spot and that cost them a bit of fuel and so it was kind of getting so close to you know running on fumes at the end of the landing um, but you know they plan things out a lot more than I do um, and so 
I guess I can get away with giving myself a lot more fuel because I really don't plan this stuff out, as you can see by the <laughs> by the real awkwardness of this landing. But you know, <laughs> a little bit of a bounce and I'm, I'm coming down um, slowly but surely. I'm trying to correct out um, kind of my lateral velocity as well as stopping myself smashing into the ground. It's always kind of a bit tricky when landing on um, slopes and such because you're always worried that you're going to fall over. So let's swap over to Jebediah and we have to take out the science from these modules. First of all from the materials bay, so I'm trying to go up and, and get it. So, I, But I figure you know it'll probably sim be simpler if I get the stuff from the mystery goo containers first and then I get the materials study. So, up and over, get the materials study. Now we can't take um, both mystery goo containers with us because uh, the way the science system works is I can't store um, two of the same science in the same pod, which is weird. I don't quite understand how that works. Maybe, um, maybe the KSP dev team should take a look at that, but uh, Anyway, you know, we have to get around it now, so we've boarded, we're ready to go, let's launch. And up we go! That was that was actually one of the more cool takeoffs I've had in KSP. I quite like that whole um, kind of <laughs> popping off and just flying into the air. I, I think it's almost cinematic in a way. And so we we burn horizontally, not um, caring about burning vertically. Uh, burning vertically is actually one of those things that's really inefficient. It's it's annoyingly inefficient. How it's just we shouldn't do it. Apart from on planets with atmospheres, including Kerbin, that's why we have to do a gravity turn. That's why we burn horizontally up until ten kilometers. Um, that is why we have to do it, it's all to do with this atmosphere. Um, and it's just it's just annoying. If Kerbin didn't have an atmosphere, you should be trying to burn um, trying to burn uh, horizontally the whole time. Well, depending on how much power your engine is producing, you know, if it's if it's a really low power engine you're probably gonna need to burn vertically a little bit just to keep yourself from falling back into Kerbin, but uh, uh, that is not the case. Unfortunately, we do have an atmosphere, as proven by this brilliant light show that um, our lovely Jebediah Kerman is giving. Well, I guess it's more of his craft than him himself. But yes, there we go. We're just we're burning through this atmosphere. This is uh, making us have to burn vertically when taking off. Anyway, um, the, as the light show dies off, I decide I'm going to, you know brighten up in post so there you go we brightened up in post and it looks really really weird if you ask me and the clouds look really weird too um they're, they're still beautiful though you know but they're weird at the same time i decide though i've got a lot of fuel left do i really need to um do i really need to use these parachutes well, let's test it out. Let's let's risk all of this science. Let's risk Jebediah's life and try and land this thing on its own engine power. So we're getting down. We're getting quite low on fuel. Are we going to be able to land? I bring. I have to bring the power down. I don't want to um, kind of burn too hard. But the thing is, it gets so close to being tank empty, and we're so close to the ground that, you know, it was just end of the line. If, if we had run out of fuel, yeah, he would have died. I wouldn't have been able to deploy the parachutes probably in time. But thankfully, we landed, destroyed the engine, of course, because, uh, everyone hates engines. <laughs> you know, Jeopardy seems to just not like engines as well. Well, I mean, he loves them, he loves them, but when landing, the craft just didn't want to. Anyway, we've got all that science now, so let's figure out what we are unlocking. So, we get some fuel, um, and what else do we get? Um, I think what we're going to do is get that, yeah, so it's pretty awesome. So some more science stuff, like science exploration. And uh, then, of course, we're going to get some 
lovely stabilization. Well, it's more of kind of control, so um, pods and larger pods and stuff. And um, now I'm thinking, which one should I get? And I get the uh, one that's further up the tech tree. And of course I have to get the one before it because then it just looks weird if I don't. And I'm just like, oh, fine, I have to get it. So, what now? Well, now we're going to try these new, brand spanking new, long burning boosters. Because they look really awesome. And this is the this is real time speed. I'm not slowing this down. This is this is the takeoff speed. Um, so this is the takeoff speed of this rocket. It's not because these boosters are, are not powerful. It's because I've only got two of them burning, only two boosters on this whole craft burning at that moment, and it's giving me enough thrust to lift it up. So they are really powerful. And as that <laughs> as that uh, burns out, it's no longer attached to my craft because I I just. I detach it early and it flies ahead of my craft, thankfully not harming anyone in the making and the doing of it. <laughs> anyway, uh, we survive the jettisoning of the next booster stage and continue to Mooner orbit as we would any other craft. Now, time for this breaking burn. This craft a lot more fuel in it. It is capable of landing... Um, and taking off without any rescue craft, which is good because <laughs> I don't really want to um, send another rescue craft just to just to get science and then have to mess around with reallocating, you know, kerbals and oh, it's it's a pain when I have to send rescue crafts. Um, it really is. However. This one doesn't need to because the transfer stage is big enough that it also helps out significantly when landing. You can see how low I am to the ground there with um, with the sun rising over the moon and the, and the canyons. So here is the landing. This is what the landing looks like and it is really, really close to the ground. I, I really like this kind of form of landing. It's always quite fun. You know, coming in so low, and you can see the scatter and the terrain and everything. So, I'm burning, you can see um, my thruster signifier, my thruster sim, I don't know, that little thing on the nav ball that shows how, um, how much thrust I'm putting into the engines. That is up all the way, which means I'm burning full thrust. And it's, it's really, um, it's getting a bit awkward because I'm trying not to crash here, as you can see. I have enough fuel to land, but it's just a matter of whether or not I will be able to stop before I hit the ground. And I bring out the landing gear, because I think I'm probably going to land quite soon. I'm killing off the orbital velocity now, so it's really it's quite good now, because I'm slowing down to such a pace that I can you know, detach this stage and actually go into the landing. At this point, I didn't know how far I was going to go before I detached the stage, but after killing the the orbital velocity, I end up um, falling to the ground rather quickly, and so I detach and just start burning and do a little weird hop thing. It's I, I don't know why I end up doing this, but I do the hop and just plop it down on the ground and what a what a lovely landing i have to admit that was one of my be my better landings i quite like that i would have liked to see um that last stage run out of fuel completely before i landed i think that would be a very good use if i maybe next moon mission i'll um i'll modify that in such a way that it actually does run out of fuel as it lands. You know, I, I don't I don't like being inefficient. It's something that really bugs me. So yeah, we put on the plaque. At least now we have enough fuel to get back, which is which is good because I like getting back. So we've done the science. Let's get back into orbit. Whoa, that was a close one. But we fly um, and we're burning um, just horizontally to try and get rid of that inefficiency. <laughs> but I have to burn north. No, no, sorry, I have to burn up the ways just to um, not smash myself into the walls of the um, canyon. Or is it a canyon in the crater? It's a crater. Not to smash myself into the walls of the crater. As, as Kerbin rises above 
the moon, we are approaching Apple Apps. So instead of waiting till we get to Apple Apps, I just decide, why not let's just burn now and go back to Kerbin. And so we return to Kerbin, floating down, and we have um, successfully returned and are floating back down. And we did it at night time, which means I've had to brighten up a bit. But yeah, this is the uh, pod, so this is just Jebediah, and then above it is the science that we gathered. So there we go. With that science, we can proceed to buy new stuff. For example, the um, kind of detaching stuff for the two meter parts. Um, we want some docking stuff as well, which is really handy. Uh, the docking stuff will allow us to um, build this long-term mission because docking is a very vital part of longer missions. And with the um, new parts, we have decided to set up this longer mission. So this is just going to be the setup of this longer mission. Next episode, what we're going to be doing is actually um, building the rest of this mission and we're going to be flying it to the moon or minimus, depending on what I feel like. <laughs> we might send it to minimus first, just to test out, because it does take a lot less fuel uh, to land on minimus, but you know, it would be good to test out on Minimus first, um, give it a good wee thing, and then bring it bring it to the moon. We could do a transfer. Instead of sending up another one, we could just transfer it to the moon and uh, continue its mission there. But we'll have to um, build a new lander. We'll have to build a whole bunch of new stuff. All of that is exciting, and all of it will be coming in the next episode. So, yes... It's in orbit. We have successfully deployed our um, long-term Mooner and Minimus exploration vehicle. I'll have to come up with a fancier name than that. <laughs> or maybe not. Maybe we'll just call it that. Who knows? Have a nice day, folks. I will see you in the next one.